Wetlands are important habitats that provide many benefits to humans and wildlife. Wetlands filter waste from water, improve air quality, and provide nutrients for various plants and animals. In the Mekong Basin, and in many parts of the world, they also provide a source of food and livelihood for local people. Wetlands are areas where there's a lot of standing water, either from flooding from rivers or from precipitation. The standing water is there for several months. Because they're so highly productive and there are certain plants that grow in wetlands, a lot of fish will go into wetlands to feed, they'll go into wetlands to spawn, and so wetlands create this kind of temporary ecosystem that happens seasonally. So a lot of different kinds of birds and plants and animals thrive in wetlands. In Cambodia, over 30% of land is covered by wetlands. Within dry open forests in the northern plain of Cambodia, it is estimated that 12,000 small wetlands exist. However, these small wetlands are often understudied and undervalued. Because of this, their numbers are decreasing rapidly. The basin population is growing, the human population, and there's a lot of changes in development going on. Um, there's a lot of natural resource use, and these can all potentially affect the wetlands. To learn more about how wetlands function and the services they provide for people and wildlife, Fish Bio joined a multidisciplinary team of researchers and non-governmental organizations and universities to study the different components of small wetlands in Vietnam and Cambodia. The project, supported by the Sustainable Mekong Research Network, included many aspects of wetland ecology. Shara Ainsley, a fish biologist from Fish Bio, worked with researchers from the Inland Fisheries Research and Development Institute to mentor Salt Vitun, a master's student from the Royal University of Agriculture in Cambodia. Together, they conducted surveys for the project. The idea was to gather some information about where these wetlands are and what kinds of ecosystem services they offer. And we had graduate students from Vietnam and Cambodia collecting data on the overall wetland size and depth and shape. Um, collecting data on the bird species, collecting plant samples, and then with Dune and I were working on sampling the different fish species that utilize the wetlands. I conduct fish sampling in uh, two of the national park. In Cambodia is the Colin Prongte Wildlife Sanctuary, and in Vietnam is the Yok Don National Park. I work to know related the fish diversity chain depend on the uh, hydrology And so we looked at the size of the wetlands, we looked at the water depth, how deep the water was in the wetlands, whether the wetland was connected to a river, and we looked at these different attributes and looked for a relationship with the species diversity indices. The fish research team found that deeper wetlands contain more diverse groups of fish. This indicates that water depth may play an important role in influencing the diversity of fish assemblages in the sanctuary. However, limited conclusions should be drawn from this study due to its rapid survey approach. While deeper wetlands had more diverse groups of fishes, management actions such as intentionally digging wetlands deeper to create permanently flooded habitats could have other unintended consequences for wetland fish communities. More research is needed to understand the relationship between wetland depth and the overall diversity of fish, plants, and other animals. In Cambodia's Kulen Promtep Wildlife Sanctuary, the team found that over 80% of the wetlands they examined had fish. The 53 total fish species they encountered using the wetlands included both common and endangered fish species. I caught two species. One species endangered species. If uh, have the endangered species breeding and swarming there, so it's uh, good to the recommendation for the wildlife sanctuary or the community to protect in area. In the future, I think if we not protection, maybe in the children or the young next generation, maybe a little bit they seen the uh, wetland. One aspect about these wetlands is that they dry up completely in the dry season. And there are a lot of fish that are actually adapted for wetlands like that. 
And it was really exciting to see it in person where there was just a tiny pool of water and we got, I think, 17 fish out of that pool of water and they were all climbing perch. They're one of the few fish that people in the area actually sell in the markets. <laughs> After examining their results, with the findings from other project members, Shara, Batoon, and the fisheries team concluded that people and animals benefit from productive wetland fish populations. And an important ecosystem service was the ability to catch fish to eat. However, such ecosystem services from these small, scattered wetlands still need to be thoroughly mapped and their benefits fully described so they can be accounted for when planning for sustainable development. We need to be gathering more basic information about where wetlands are located, um, what kinds of benefits they offer, what kinds of animals and plants are found in the wetlands. And so this study was a first step in that direction, but there's a lot more work that can be done. I'm hoping that studies like ours will help shine a light on just this cool ecosystem that exists and how important it is to protect some of it and hopefully that will um, benefit people for generations to come if we can learn to protect the wetlands. Thank you.